We are, all of us, disciples of the internet. Not the content that you search out, but the effects of years in the process, teaching the soul, you don't need to wait for anything, particularly not answers. And yet you can't trust the information that you do have, the constant contradiction of facts and what that's done to us, and the suspicion and almost hatred of any form of mystery. Like this has had a huge effect on those who would be followers of Jesus, disciples of the living God. And we want to unpack that further this week. April 15th, <laughs> tax day here in the U.S. Did you get your taxes in, guys? <laughs> yes, barely. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> God it's so stressful, uh, which is why we're going to take a pause here in a minute. Um, but yeah, welcome back, everybody. Alex, Alan, John, uh, this week back here for part two in a series on wh where we're headed is what is the rescue that God has for the human soul that has been unknowingly, unwittingly discipled by the internet, by the process, you know, of having the entire base of human knowledge accessible to you in a few clicks. <laughs> um, yeah, wait, this is, you know, it, when it's your normal, you, you don't realize just how completely jacked it is. But let's let's catch our breath. Let's not freak out. Let's take our pause and and jump back in this week to part two. Jesus, I don't want to be spun up today. I, I don't want to be already anxious and angry. And so I need to release everything to you again. I want to unburden my soul and just set it all down. Just take it all off and set it down. And so I am practicing giving everyone and everything to you. Would you name for me right now, Lord, what do I need to let go of? I lay it all down. It helps for me to name it. I give you my kids. I give you the future. I give you my work. I give you that exasperating meeting. I give you all that needs to get done just so I can come back to you, God, and to my own soul in sanity and peace-centeredness. So I release it all, and I ask you to breathe the breath of life into me again. Amen. Well, guys, where are you after last week's podcast? Like, what are you thinking about? How's the condition of your soul this week? What was the lingering what was the lingering effect? Well, for me, it's a just an awakening, I guess, that I need to be far more comfortable with mystery. Hmm. And I, you know, I I love mystery novels, Agatha Christie, you know, the classics. Oh yeah. Um, but the whole point of that is it is a mystery to be solved. Like you're not in it if there's no solution oh, or yeah. answer. Oh yeah. And I think my brain without me being really aware of it was, well, anytime there's a mystery, the whole point is search and search and find yes. until you get the answer. Yes. And yes. that's not how the kingdom of God yes. operates. Yep. So that was yep. a big revelation. Yep. I woke up this morning to it's just an incredible assault on hope in my soul. And it was set up by a, by a really beautiful meeting that we had Hmm. with our staff, you know, we do a quarterly vision thing with our staff and, um, 
where, who are we, where are we going? What are we working on? What, you know, what's God saying? And uh, it was an awesome day and, yeah. and great yeah. plans and global things and new events, you know, we're dreaming of. And yeah, so it was awesome. But what some of what was discussed as pretty certain contradicted things that I thought that God had whispered to me in my heart mm. in, in, in recent days, oh. like directly contradicted it. And I was thrown hard mm. by that. And, and, and I, was, I was tanking because anything that attacks your life with God, you know, it's just a brutal thing to undermine somebody else's faith in God. I, I just hate it. I hate it. I hate it when I do it unconsciously or when information seems to do it or, you know, but I woke up to this assault on hope and I'm like, Papa, you get, you got to help me. Like I'm, I'm trying to get into some of my morning prayers and get back to well being and centeredness. And, and he just said, just allow for mystery. Hmm. Right now, John, just allow for mystery. You, do, you don't understand how these two things actually can both be true or, you know, or, or will make sense you know, as they converge kind of down the road here. They will converge. And, um, but just right now, just this morning, just allow for mystery. And as soon as I did that in my soul, it was like, boom, one, I'm fine. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm not tanking. Yeah. And two, oh, there you are. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, I found God again. Guess yes. what? He was yeah. right here in the living room with me <laughs> That's all good. along. But it, it, it was a rescue because I was, I was, as a disciple of the internet, I am convinced that in the way, the path to well-being and human flourishing is to understand everything. Yeah. You got to understand it. Or you can't even experience it, right? Mm. You gotta understand it first. So yeah, anyway, huge, huge rescue to me, even just this yes. morning. Yeah. John, after you know, after you unpacked this with us, I, it, it hit me hard. Like this, mm. this feels really significant. Mm. And it and not just for me, but for for anyone with listening ears mm. to hear. Mm. The thing, the thing that rose up in my heart um, was just these two sentences. One, we didn't do something wrong, but something wrong has been done to us. Meaning, I didn't set out to become a disciple of the internet, but I have become a disciple of the internet. Like that, that that's a pretty. Um, hard truth that you shared last week. And yeah. I, and I see it here. You've opened my eyes. I see it <laughs> like there's a reality that, yeah, that's true. And, and, and so there's something in me that's just sad that that's true. Yeah. Um, but also like feeling the kindness of God, mm. I, that was done to you. Mm. Like you didn't set out to become that. That's right? so good. And, um, that's and so, so I'm, I'm, I'm interested as we go along yeah. in talking more about this, like, yeah, what, what, what's the path forward yes. is in my heart. Yes. Right. Yeah, so absolutely. that's where I'm at right yeah. now. Yeah. And I think yeah. probably most of our listeners. So let me just add, this is part two. If you didn't hear last week, you actually might want to go back and get that because we're going to assume some things. But by way of review, what we were talking about was we are disciples of the internet and of the process, not the content. Mm. Because people search for a million different things every day. And some of what you search for is immensely helpful. Come on, what are we talking about? There's a yeah. reason we do this, right? It is immensely helpful. But that process has discipled the soul. Mm. It has shaped our souls profoundly to expect immediate answers and to therefore be frustrated when we don't have immediate answers, right? But at the same time, it like this gambling addiction dilemma, but it keeps changing the answers. 
you know, you need to take this much B12. Uh, actually, no, that much is causing anxiety in some people. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, this is the proper way to lose weight. Well, no, that's actually a horrible way to lose weight. It's, you know, you're storing fat in your body. You're conditioning mm -hmm. yourself. This is, this is our daily. Yeah. Right. And then you throw the politics and all that stuff in there and you go, I don't even, I don't even trust anything anymore. Yeah. It's sort of what the soul starts defaulting into. Yeah. Hmm. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so totally. we're we're introducing the idea that all of us have been shaped profoundly by this process. And and the concern being um it it has it's affecting our life in God in profound ways. Um and we need to find a way out and this series is about the way out. But as Henry Nouwen said, answers before there are questions do damage to the soul, right? You can't just, you know, rush to the solution. You've got to say, hey, are you aware this is going on? And can we just admit how much this actually has shaped us? Alex, what, what you said about we haven't done something wrong, something wrong has been done to us, is that's so kind and that's so true. I want to underscore it for our friends listening, because this can feel almost accusatory. Hey, yeah. you, you got sucked into a, a Ponzi scheme, everybody. You're such an right. idiot. You know, right. no, 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 no. That's not yeah. what we're saying at all. Like to survive in, in, a, in a world like ours, you do need to look stuff up and things yes. are happening fast in your kid's education. And wait, 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 what's that? I need to get up to speed on that. Yeah. I mean, you want to be a good right. parent. Yeah. You, you, you want to, you know, thrive in your work. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're not doing something bad, but what right. we're describing is we have all been pulled into discipleship to the internet as a process. And that process um, has, has severely undermined faith and, and the faculty. So I want to talk a little bit about that for a minute because we were before we got on, uh, started recording, Alan and I were riffing on the fragility of faith. I want to use love first as the example. Love is a very, very, very powerful thing in the human heart. I mean, oh my gosh. Mm. Like, <clears throat> you know, you will lay down your life for someone else. You would do anything for your child. I mean, lo love is a very powerful, powerful yeah. thing. But it is also very, very fragile by its nature. And the fragility does not mean it's, it's not bad that it's fragile. Because because love can be deeply hurt, right? Right. Somebody betrays you. Mm. Yeah. It might take years to build trust again. Okay. So you have this mm -hmm. this really beautiful dualism, this truth of oh, it's powerful. Love is powerful, but love is also very delicate. It's easily harmed. Okay. Right. And therefore, it's something that needs to be protected. You need to protect love. For example, in my morning prayers, I always include Stacy in my morning prayers. And I will say out loud as I'm praying for her, who I love. Like I'm just reaffirming mm -hmm. every day, mm -hmm. this is the woman I love. Love is something to be protected. And when hard things happen and misunderstanding or bad conversations or, you know mistakes. Yes. Like you got, you got to quickly work it out to protect the love. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Faith is like that too. Hmm. Faith is a powerful thing. Are you kidding me? People have moved mountains with faith, but it's also delicate and it's also easily harmed and undercut, right? I mean, can you be undercut in one event? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay. So for example, in the beginning of the ministry, we kept having these words and promises from God around what we were calling the center. We went so far with this as to get architectural renderings made of these beautiful stone buildings. We thought we were going to build kind of like a monastic yes. center yep. to house this message, which is so beautifully, you know, it's of the heart and it's of beauty and the heart of men, the heart of women. And okay. And so we thought that we were going to actually have a place 
And then one day God made it very clear, no, 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 I, that was a picture of what you already are and what you're offering the world. Well, I was devastated. I was, de- I'm like, first off, what? Mm-hmm. We don't get the beautiful stone yes, buildings. Right. I'm mad. Uh-huh. But I was actually the deeper cut, the deeper shake was, wait, I thought, I thought you said that, God. Yeah. And many people have experienced that shake uh, of their faith where it's like, wait, I thought you promised us yeah. this. I, th- I thought you promised us that our son would come home. I thought, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And, and whew, like faith is a very powerful thing. It is a very delicate thing. And faith must be protected, especially in an hour like this one on the earth. What we were talking about last week was that the constant contradiction of information. No, that's not how you exercise. That I mean, like, I'm trying to strengthen my core and I'm trying to do things to help my lower back. Do you know that if you, I mean, people are going to go Google this, like you Google lower back care, Uh exercise, strengthening, training, you are going to get passionate videos contradicting one another. Sit-ups are the way to do it. And then the next guy comes along and goes, sit-ups are terrible for your lower spine. Do you realize you're compacting it every time? You know, like, Yep. Okay. Yeah. And you just go, right. this is the madness of it. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, guess what? Your cinnamon that you're using has lead in it. <laughs> hey, guess <laughs> what? The, the that renowned car manufacturer, they installed uh, a, a device in their emission system that would bypass emissions tests, even though your car couldn't. Like they lied to the world, like millions of vehicles, yes. you could, right? And then, oh, well, hey, Russian hackers, guess what? You know, fake news to influence global elections. Mm. And, and that photo that your friend posted last week that you just thought was so precious, it was fake. It was yeah. AI generated. Yeah. The effect of that right. on your soul, have you become aware of, of like just the, uh, the skepticism? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, John, as I, as I was thinking through <clears throat> just that idea of the, we become weary, skeptical pragmatists and the skeptical piece, I actually went back to, um, this is many, many, many podcasts ago, maybe almost the year before, but when you and JD and I sat down and, and mm-hmm. we unpacked the desolation yeah. thing mm-hmm. that JD and I were experiencing at that time. And, and I think this is, this is a window into how desolation got in, mm-hmm. at least for me, because it, because it got through that door yes. of the skepticism. Yes. Um, yes. Because what I was experiencing was I can't like, I can't trust what, what people in my own faith are saying. Right. Like the, you know, the, the people who have lied, the people who have, the things that have been misrepresented, the things that yeah. it just, even down to the family unit. Right. And, and I just, th- there was something in that mm. skeptical, like, man, I can't trust anyone. I'm like, I'm done with it all. Right. Yep. And yep. that and desolation got yep. in and oh, totally. had me going down mm. that track of I'm oh. I'm just giving up on all of it. I can't trust any of it. And I'll just I'll just wall it all mm. off. And that's that's mm. where my heart was mm. tempted to mm. run to was was just fully embrace the skeptical. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's brutal. Yeah. For so many who have walked away from God or their faith has kind of fallen off the edge because they can't hear the voice of God. And we all want that intimacy. I think being a disciple of the internet has really harmed us in that way, particularly because we are trained that, no, I deserve instant, quick, customizable answers when I want it, on what I want, how I want it now. And I think when then we unknowingly kind of, John, as we were talking about last week a little, go back to God 
and don't get that, Mm -hmm. then it feels either that he doesn't care, he's unkind, he's not there, he doesn't speak. And, and so our ears. Or that you can't hear. Right. And, and in some ways we lose the ability to even try to hear the voice of God yeah. because it's a different frequency yes. than what the internet provides. Yes. Yes. Oh gosh, it's huge. So what we were kind of recapping last week is among other things, discipleship to the internet, um, meaning the process of the access and the search for information and the contradiction, one, has conditioned our souls to immediate responses. We're just used to it. I mean, mm-hmm. guys, just look at your frustration when, when it takes a few minutes for your, your computer to, to boot up mm-hmm. or, or you're downloading a, you know, an upgrade to the iOS system on your phone or whatever it is. Like the frustration yeah. of milliseconds. Yeah. I remember watching <laughs> a, a pretty funny comedian <laughs> online who is saying, people, this thing is going to outer space yeah, right. and back to you. Would you give it a couple <laughs> minutes to yeah. get back yeah. from space? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but it's just, condi- yeah. we have conditioned our souls. That It has conditioned our souls. And yeah. I want to stay with your idea of we didn't do something wrong. We didn't set out to do this kind of harm mm-hmm. to ourselves. It was done to us. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing. Second is the constant contradiction of information, uh, either because of new science, right, or exposure, expose, scandal, that the you know, deception being uncovered, right, yeah. that has fueled this cynicism and weariness and skepticism in it. It just has. It just it takes a toll. And then the third thing we had named last week was um, not only has the internet discipled us into, there needs to be no mystery about anything. You can get to the bottom of this. It's actually taught your soul that if there is mystery, something's wrong. Mm, Something suspect here, Mm -hmm. you know, probably a Mm -hmm. cover up. We got to now, and and so then, like a gambling addiction, it's just you've got this skepticism, but you're still searching for the facts. Yes, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, it's this horrible thing. And and what I was trying to point out, like, you you know, you run this by Saint Paul, you run this by, you know, Athanasius, you, anybody of, of our spiritual forefathers, foremother Julian of Norwich, you you know, Teresa of Avila, you run this stuff by them, they 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 would be horrified. Yeah. At the removal of yeah. mystery mm. from our life with God yes. and, and from life itself. Okay. So I want to read a little bit more of what I wrote on this and, yeah. and let's keep going here. Okay. So what I was asking you guys last week, and I, I'm going to ask the listeners again, just to show the erosion of confidence. If faith and the faculty of faith is something to be protected, I was asking you guys, how confident are you that you are getting the accurate news? Mm. Uh, Here's a few more questions. Uh, How confident are you that your financial future is being well guarded by the folks in charge of guarding that future? (laughs) How confident are you that your government is telling you the truth? There's just this erosion of confidence. Yeah. Okay. The internet has discipled us into weary, skeptical pragmatists. We have very little confidence left in our faculty of belief. Okay, you would think we could keep this limited to exercise and politics, but it's bled into our ability to access God. And the reason that Scripture says that your faith is the most precious thing that you own in the entire world, like you can't accumulate enough wealth to to compare to your faith, is because it is by your faith you access God. Mm -hmm. And with him, his help, yeah. guidance, mm. direction, healing, care, provision, and the and the fullness of his kingdom, like all the beauty of the kingdom. Okay. That's why whew, th- this is really important what we're talking about here. We wish we could keep it limited to, you know, nutrition and and all that stuff, you know, changing refrigerator filters, whatever, but it's bled into our ability to access God. Um and, and then the mystery piece, right? 
So I go on to say this. Um, we feel that in order to experience God and access his help, we need to understand the spiritual life like we do nutrition, exercise, and retirement plans. A friend asked me this week, yes, yes, but how do I love God? How do I take refuge in him? I mean, practically speaking. Okay, it is the question of the person discipled by the internet. As soon as you hear, folks, the demand for the practical in simple, clear, immediate steps, you know that mm. you are talking to a disciple of the internet. Okay, so this this is huge because the, the the demand for the practical we when I said weary skeptical pragmatists is that pragmatism we honestly believe that the practical questions are the real stuff like that's the gold right, right. all this other fluff you know like get to the practical okay <clears throat> my friend was asking how in the same way that he would ask how do I change the water filter in my refrigerator. The question was filled with demand for the mechanics, as in, make God like my refrigerator. Not mysterious, but concrete. Give me the practical. Make it practical. Give me the latest science, or I won't believe you. Mm. In fact, I hardly believe you now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? All right. It's like asking for the mechanics of falling in love, mm. enjoying a sunset comforting a frightened child right yeah you don't you don't need the mechanics folks yes okay in fact if, if you can demand like I, I actually need to understand the science of laughter or I'm not gonna trust laugh laughing and laugh like you're never gonna have the joy yes. of just cracking up at stuff right yeah it's that because we think that's the way to truth uh, how do I love God? Asking that, it's like asking, how do I love my son, my daughter? The heart knows how to love without being told the latest neuroscience, for heaven's sakes. <clears throat> but this is the bind that we've been discipled into through years in the process, right? Mm. Weary, skeptical, pragmatist. Guilty. Um, and I think... Part of that is in our age, we've come to see efficiency mm -hmm. as like a fruit of the spirit. Mm -hmm. Like if you're really, if you're really, <laughs> you know, going to make a difference in the world, you uh -oh. have to be efficient mm. and you have to be intellectual mm. and understand and, and then do it efficiently. And mm. I just look at life and go... I, that's got me on a treadmill that I don't want to be on and actually doesn't make me more present or more at peace no. or increase my faith. No. No matter how efficient or how much I learn or study or know. Yeah. 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 John, that um, what's so helpful about what you wrote down there is um, getting at, faith through that lens of, like you were saying, nobody asks, tell me the mechanics of how I kiss my wife at the wedding altar, right? Yes. Like, no, it's, it's there, it's in you and you're going to do it and experience it, right? Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's an experience. Yeah. Um, and you can, and it can only be gained through experience. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I love the way you described that, but I, but I, man, I see it in myself. Like I, there are, there are times where you, you'll, you'll be describing these things of a life with God. And I do feel that frustration in me of, mm. well, just just tell me what to do. Just how many minutes yeah. should I pray? Yes. Like, well, what are the words? Like, yes. tell me just the the exact words, right? Yes. Like, that'll that'll yes. solve it, right? Like, yes. you, we want the yes. we want the combination code because we think there should be one, and we're uncomfortable 
with the mystery of it. Yeah. This is the effect of what your soul has been discipled Mm. to believe Mm. and to operate in. So you give a child an ice cream bar, okay? They will grab it, and usually they'll run to like their favorite spot to sit. Yeah. And they'll sit down (laughs) in their favorite spot, and they'll unwrap it, and they'll start just relishing it, okay? With their feet kicking, you know, kind of the happy wagging tail of the dog thing. Yeah. You give the same ice cream bar to an adult. The first thing they do is flip the package over to look at the contents, right? How many calories? What's the carbs to protein ratio? What are the contents? And folks, by then, like all joy is gone. I don't care if you go ahead and eat it. Like you, um, William Blake's famous thing Mm. as the enlightenment was really rolling through knowledge and what we consider to be knowledge. He said, we murder to dissect, mm. you know, which you actually yes, do. right? But th- we have this idea that, no, 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 you have to dissect things, right? You've got to break it down to, 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 to get to the truth. Go, he, that's, not how, that's not how you enjoy a sunset, folks. Mm. That's not how you laugh at a really good joke. You, you, if you break it down, you won't enjoy it. Yes. Right. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's diabolical. Yeah. Okay. So um, part two, we are outing this. We're trying to reveal faith is something to be protected. Belief is something. Love, hope. These are things so powerful, but that need protection. And this discipleship to the internet has just undermined faith. And it's undermined, therefore, our ability to access God. Because, yeah, the weary, the skeptical, and the drive for the pragmatic, um, we honestly think that is the best question. But but when you put it to, yeah, kissing my wife, I don't want you to give me the pragmatic. Don't take that no. away from me. Don't. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I was cracking up the other day because I'm driving home thinking about this. I'm like, how would I talk to guys about this? It would be like it would be like stopping in the middle of sex and saying, hey, babe, do you know what's going on in your neurons right now? (laughs) This is the coolest thing I read last week. Can I, I gotta, I gotta just tell you this thing. I, they actually, honey, you're not in love with me. There's just hormones that are flooding through (laughs) your brain right now. Honestly. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. That's what we've done to our life with God. Mm. Because this dissection, this practical, this latest science, that this rules the pulpit. It rules the Christian publishing industry. It, it rules almost all discipleship programs. We have removed mystery, beauty, wonder, joy. Yeah. And, and the access of God. And, and, but like the child. So where we're going to go in this series is this. Children and mystics Mm. understand things about the nature of reality. Like you don't need to stop during sex to explain what's going on with the neuroscience for heaven's sakes. Okay. Right. So as I've been thinking about these questions and I've been, and I've been realizing the effect of these things on faith and the experience of God, I just, I just really see the diabolical nature behind it because what people need right now, humanity is in utter poverty right mm. now, utter poverty, because God is the fuel that we run on. And it was C.S. Lewis who said, God made the human being as a man would design an engine. Uh, the engine is designed to run on petrol right? Or diesel or mm-hmm. natural fuels yeah. or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it can't run on anything else. You can't dump tomato sauce in there. It won't run on it. He says, God has designed the human being, everything about you, your body, soul, spirit is designed to literally feed on and run on and be flourished by God, mm. the, the living presence of the living God within us. Like in 
the beautiful creation story in Genesis. It says he breathed into us the breath of life mm. and we became a living soul. Okay, so I mean, that is life itself. Humanity is absolutely impoverished for that. We actually need daily experiences of God and his kingdom. Hmm. It's been stripped from the disciples of the internet. I think we can get it back. And I think the answer is in a really surprising direction. I think it is centered in what Christian mystics knew down through the ages. Now, as soon as I use that phrase, people <laughs> are freaking out. Okay. Well, I mean, you got, you got a, a funny look on your face. What do you hear in that? Well, it comes back to information. <laughs> Tell me what they knew. <laughs> Wait, I'll just look it up on my exactly. phone. Exactly. Right. People are going to start Googling it. Okay. Problem. Okay. So folks, hang on, hang on. Don't freak out. I know the word Christian mystic carries all sorts of connotations for you, but that be is because you are a child of the enlightenment. Um, there is bizarre mysticism. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm. If you read the actual lives of the Christian mystics, and I'm talking about, again, Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, mm -hmm. Augustine, Aquinas, even Martin Luther. It's so funny. Martin Luther is actually listed in, in the category of Christian mystics, which would cause the Reformed folks to just lose their <laughs> stuff right now on this podcast. <laughs> because again, like the Reformed movement has so much beauty to it, mm. so much goodness. But it devolved, it collapsed into knowledge yeah. mm. over the experience of God. Yes. Experience can't be trusted. Only good theology can be trusted. Mm. Okay. But that's not Luther's experience. He was an Augustine monk. He, I, he had he he had conversations with the devil for heaven's sakes. Like he reports these things. Mm -hmm. He had profound experiences of God. Yeah. Okay. So you have to put Luther in there. So that's really fun. What these folks that they understood a life with God prior to the age of reason, prior to the discipleship to the internet, and one of the basic things they understood is. You don't have to understand how something works mm. in order to enjoy it and benefit from it. Wow, that's a statement. Yeah. It's like vitamin D, okay? They had no idea for centuries, millennia, for heaven's sakes. They had no idea that how the sun on your skin allows your body to produce vitamin D in your cells. I want to say, do you really, people? <laughs> I mean, you think you do, but like, come on, like yeah. that is just full of wonder and mystery. They didn't know any of that stuff. They just simply bared their skin to the sun and rejoiced in it. Right. Yeah. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. That is the way out. There is a way out. And I think it is the provision of God in this hour. I think that there's something that Adam and Eve knew. There's something that David knew. There's something that the Apostle John knew. And, and the saints and the mystics, Christian mystics, holy biblical mysticism, meaning the regular experience, not just knowledge of, the regular experience of God and his kingdom, is available to every human being. And it is the nourishment that we need in this hour. Mm. And to get to it, it's really interesting that Jesus says, unless you become as little children, he's like, eat the ice cream bar for heaven's sake. Stop looking at the wrapper. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. John, will you, will you re-say what you said of, you don't have to... You don't need to know the neuroscience of laughter, folks, yeah. to crack up at a really funny story. Yeah. You don't need to know the optics of light and the retina in your eye to appreciate beauty. Yeah. Okay? 
You don't have to understand the mechanics of something in order to both appreciate it, but also be nourished by it. Yeah. And would you say, if you do know the mechanics of it, you can still experience it and let it be yes. amazing and beautiful yes. without getting caught up yes. if in, you, in the understanding. You can. You can. Yeah. If you will get out of the weary, cynical mm. skepticism mm. And, and get out of that. Yes. Get out of that way of operating in the world. Yeah. Okay. All right. More to come next week. Mm. We're going to keep going into this and in, into, okay, well then show us, show us the way. <laughs>